danger, Dr. Danfield. The human mind is like a cave. Beyond the light, there are dark passageways and mysterious recesses. I, Dr. Daniel Danfield, have explored those known retreats and know their secrets. Dr. Daniel Danfield, authority on crime psychology, has an unhappy faculty for getting himself mixed up in hazardous predicaments because of his astonishing revelations regarding the workings of the criminal mind. As our story opens, we find Dr. Danfield in his office dictating to his pretty young secretary, Rusty Fairfax. Period paragraph. And, uh, unfortunately, it began to look to Miss Fairfax and me as though our trip of 3,000 miles to the town of Santa Playa, California, was to be without profit. However, after delivering my lecture at the university, we ended upon one of the most exciting adventures of our careers. It wasn't until three days later, however, that I learned of a strange wedding that had taken place in Tijuana, Mexico. in the United States again, my dear. And it's all right with me. I hate Mexico. Oh, but I thought you liked it. You said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I know. I said I wanted to go down there to get married because it was romantic. Well, I didn't know what it was going to be like. <laughs> Does it make a difference? We are now Mr. and Mrs. Manuel Algeo. Where will we go back to Mexico again? That I swear. I'll say we won't. I think Mexico left a bad taste in your mouth, my dear. Come close to me. Let us kiss and oh, forget. Oh, Manuel, stop it. Stop. But you're my wife. You know the man kisses his own wife? No. No? Look, Manuel, we might as well face it now as ever. I'm leaving you in the next town. You are le <laughs> Oh, come, my dear, you make the joke. <laughs> no, but it's no joke. I'm walking out on you. Walking out? It's something I do not understand. We, we are married. We, we are in love. No. Nope. Wrong again, Manny. Married, but not in love. I never did love you. But, Annie... And don't call me Annie. The name is Anne. Very well. Anne. Now will you explain, please, that my ears are deceiving me, that I did not hear correctly what you said? You heard correct, all right. Look, Manny, you came into the United States on a visa, didn't you? Yes. And according to the conditions of the visa, it becomes null and void if you leave the country even for an hour. But what are these? do with us getting married? Just this. I played you for a sucker, chum. You're filthy with dough, and I'm going to have some of it without the bother of being your wife. Oh? And how is this going to be? I'm getting a divorce, and then I'm suing you for alimony. Oh. And uh, will I pay this alimony? You'll pay it. But you want me to notify the government that you broke the terms of your visa. Oh, so that is it. And will the government believe this story you will tell him? They'll believe it. This is kind of a racket with me, Manny boy. I know the angle. I take care of everything. And uh, what are these angles, please? Remember those pictures we had taken in front of the hotel? Hotel Tijuana? Get it, Manny? Hotel Tijuana, Mexico. Be just too bad if those pictures got into the wrong hands, wouldn't it? Yes, that's true. You all the pictures with you now? The pictures, Manny Boy, are in safer hands than mine, so don't get any ideas. Ah, then you have the accomplice. You bet I have. <laughs> oh, I think this is very funny. I, I think we are two, uh, what, what is you call him, suckers. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Poor Manuel. He's taken for the ride, eh? So you think Manuel has the great amount of money, eh? You have. You said you had. You proved it to me. Well, of course. Would a wealthy Americano girl marry a poor Spanish refugee? No. No, that is something for your moving pictures, I think. Wealthy American girl? Did you think I was wealthy? Did you not tell Manuel you were? Then I was only giving myself a build-up. Build-up. See, at building up, we are both very excellent, I think. Why, you dirty double crossing no, I'm going to send those pictures to the government anyhow. I'll show you. I think the government would be very happy to get them. They will say... Oh, it is very nice for two American citizens to visit our good neighbors on the south to get married. Two American citizens? You mean... Oh, my poor little Annie. She is so clever in the wrong way, I think. But the visa... In the war, the visa says, do not leave this country. 
But now the war is over. Manuel is the American citizen. I'll fall that cheap, lousy, two-time and guy. We should not call the ghetto black. <laughs> oh, now, with this understanding that we now have, I, I think we could still make the happy marriage. Are you kidding? Do you think I'd be dope enough to tie up with anyone who has any dope? But we have the love. Love? Huh? Listen, half wit, get smart. If you think I'm in love with you, you're crazy. So? It is perhaps better your way. There is no longer a happy marriage between us because there is no money. <laughs> I think I think that is very funny. You won't think it's so funny. Hey, what are you turning off here for? In Spain, the wife does not ask the questions. She obeys her husband and is silent. Well, this isn't Spain, and you're not going to be my husband for very long. What's the idea of stepping on it? There's no fire. Fire is in my heart. That I do not think you can understand. You took that corner on two wheels. The next corner, I think, we will take on no wheels at all. Manuel, what's the matter with you? What are you trying to do? I think it would be beyond your comprehension what I am trying to do, my dear. Are you nuts? Slow down. Can't you see that curve ahead? Oh, Manuel, we'll never make it. For well, once you're right, my dear, I do not intend that we shall make it. Stop, you crazy but fool. pity, my dear, you could not understand. Stop, stop. Turn for the second act of Danger, Dr. Denfield. But first... And now for the second act of... Danger, Dr. Denfield. Come in. Hi, Dan. Say, look, can't we... Leave the door open, please, Miss Fairfax. Propriety, you know. <laughs> Propriety. Dan, sometimes I think you're a prude. One must be careful. What are those pictures? I'm not quite sure. I came in the mail a half an hour ago. Yeah, what do you think? Hmm. Man and a woman standing in front of the Tijuana Hotel. That sticker on their suitcase says they were just married. Anybody we know? Not yet, Miss Fairfax. What do you mean, not yet? There's only one reason why anyone would send me a picture of two people whom I don't know, Miss Fairfax. Whoever the sender is wants me to know the subjects. But how did whoever sent the pictures know you were staying here at this hotel? There is a newspaper in town, and my activities are, shall we say, of interest to some people. Dan Danfield, do you mean that you told the newspapers we were here? And you promised me you wouldn't get mixed up in Pardon any... me, Miss Fairfax. Yes, Danfield speaking. I beg your pardon? What picture? Oh, I see. Yes, I receive. What? Three miles off. Hello, hello. Who was it? Was it a man or a woman? I'm not sure, Miss Fairfax. It could have been either a man or a woman disguising his or her voice. Oh, let me think a minute. No way. Don't start to think yet. Tell me. Tell me what he said first. Was he asking about these pictures? Hmm. Yes, that must be it. No other answer. Most unusual. Dan, will you please tell me what this is all about? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, of course, Miss Fairfax. Get your notebook, please. My notebook? What for? Where are we going? We're going to a spot on a side road three miles off the San Diego Highway, Miss Fairfax. There's a body there awaiting our examination. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Fairfax. If I'd known you felt this way, I would have insisted that you remain back at the hotel. Insisting wouldn't have done any good, and you know it wouldn't. Well, then please refrain from further complaining and concentrate on the task at hand. I'm not complaining. Only this seems to me like a wild goose chase. And if it isn't, we're heading for trouble. I'll be very much disappointed if we don't find trouble. Trouble in this instance will mean an unusual criminal mind. And uh, studying unusual criminal minds is the reason we travel 3,000 miles across the continent, Miss Fairfax. I wish you'd picked out a better road than this. This one looks as though it hadn't been traveled on for months. You're quite wrong, Miss Fairfax. It was traveled on two nights ago. You'd better slow down that curve up ahead. Dan, look. Yes, yes, I see it, Miss Fairfax. Overturned automobile. Oh, what a terrible accident. It looks as though it just happened, too. It happened, I think, two nights ago, Miss Fairfax. 
Let's uh, look around here. If it happened two nights ago, why hasn't someone reported it? There's no sign of anyone having been here. No one has been here, Miss Fairfax. As you pointed out yourself, the road hasn't been traveled in months. Well. What the... Oh, Dan, it's a man. Yes, I, uh... You'd better wait over there, Miss Fairfax. No, I... I'm all right. Dan, what a terrible way to die. He's all smashed up. Indeed he is. Now, let me see. What are you going to do? Do? Well, naturally, I'm going to ascertain the victim's identity if possible. That's strange. His clothes aren't torn. Shouldn't we call a doctor of the, of the police or something? A doctor would be a little help to this poor fellow. Well, here are some papers. What's his name? According to this driver's license, the gentleman's name is Manuel Labello. Well. What's that you're looking at now? Some pictures, Miss Fairfax. Some pictures of a man and a woman standing in front of the Tijuana Hotel. There's a sticker on the suitcase which says, just married. They're just like the pictures you got through the mail. Indeed they are. Yeah. It means, Miss Fairfax, that this poor chap was murdered. <laughs> Chief Howard. I see. You checked the Bellows house and he's been missing for three days. Well, how about friends and relatives? Well, in that case, the county will take care of the burial. Very well, Chief. Thank you. Well, Miss Fairfax, something on your mind? Uh, why didn't you tell Chief Howard that this Manuel Abello had gone to Mexico to get married so someone could look up his wife? Miss Fairfax, I have no proof. And why didn't you tell him about the pictures you took from Manuel Abello's body? Under the circumstances, Miss and Fairfax, And why I... didn't you tell him that you thought Manuel Abello had been murdered? He didn't ask me. Now, Miss Fairfax, I'll have to ask you... Yes, Stanfield speaking. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I'll wait. Who's that? A certain chap in Tijuana, Mexico. Oh, by the way, Miss Fairfax, do you speak Spanish? No. Excellent. Then it uh, won't do you any good to stand so close to me in an attempt to overhear the conversation. Oh, you... Yes? Yes, this is Dan Field. Hello, Pablo. Yes, that's right. What was the name? Write this down, Miss Fairfax. Anne Ever... Everard. Yes, yes, I have it. 2662 Rutherford Drive, Hollywood. Yes. Thank you very much. The check will be mailed to you. Goodbye. Did you will get that name and address, Miss Fairfax. Yes. Who's she? Well, according to her picture, she's a very attractive girl. Yes, very attractive. I think I shall enjoy talking to Miss Everard. <laughs> That house we just passed was 2662 Rutherford Drive. Well, that's fortunate because here we are at the end of the street. Dan, look. We're way up in the Hollywood Hills. Those lights down there are the movie capital. I have no interest in the cinema industry, Miss Fairfax. Well, here we are. These cement steps lead up to the house, I imagine. I think this is exciting. I often wondered how it would feel to have Hollywood at my feet. Well, people who build houses on the sides of hills like this should have their heads examined. I once knew an advertising man. Oh, method. Dan. Look. The farther up we go, the, the more lights we can see. That must be Hollywood Boulevard over there. Oh, it's like a string of pearls. Oh, narrow stairs, no lights. It's like an ancient fortress. Boy, would, would I like to live in a place like this? I'd sit out on that balcony up there all night long and look at the view. And undoubtedly you'd be so carried away you'd swoon and tumble off and break your neck. Well, here we are at the top, thank heaven. Oh, Dan. We're up so high. I, I feel dizzy. You're acting dizzy, Miss Fairfax. Come on, let's get on with our pants. Here's the bell. There's probably no one home. In that event, we'll sit here on the balcony and wait. He'll sit nowhere and wait. What do you want? I thought I heard a movement behind the door. Are you Mrs. Abello? Mrs. A... No, never heard of her. 
Anything else you want to know? Yes, yes. There's a great deal I want to know, Mrs. Abello. I told you I'm not Mrs. Abello. And I say you are, unless you have a twin who was married in Tijuana, Mexico the day before yesterday. I haven't any twin, and she wasn't married in Tijuana, Mexico the day before yesterday. She's lying, Dan. She's the girl who was in the Miss pictures. Fairfax, pictures. What pictures? The ones you had taken in front of the Tijuana Miss Hotel. Miss Fairfax, you're talking too much. Hey, Felix. Yeah, baby. Something wrong? Seems like these two jokers have got some pictures they want to sell us. Oh, is that a fact? Let's have a look at your goods, chum. Dan, he's, he's a giant. Now, look here, my man. I said let's see the pictures. I heard you, and I don't like the tone of your voice. Let go of my chum, arm. I'll break your arm if you don't give me them pictures. Hand let them over. Let go of my arm. Let him go, you big boy. I'll, I'll shut her up, Annie. No, shut her up. Come here, you All go. right, white oh. guy. Turn for the third act of Danger Doctor Danfield. But first. And now back to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger Doctor Danfield. Coming too, Felix? Yeah, uh, let me take a look. Yeah, yeah he'll be all right in a minute. Where's the girl? Locked her up in the closet. Don't worry about her. What are we going to do with them? I don't know. First, we got to find out where they got them pictures. And maybe they'd better have a little accident. Like uh, falling over the balcony, huh? Yeah. Like falling over the balcony. Oh. We weren't at home, see? They came up here and got to looking at the view. Oh, hey, the guy's coming, too. Oh, my head. Oh, what hit me? A gun butt, chum. You didn't want to sell us your pictures, remember? Pictures? Yes. Uh, Miss Fairfax, where's Miss Fairfax? Relax, mister. She's all right. She better be all right. If you harm one hair of that girl's head, I'll... Oh, you what, chum? Is that Miss Fairfax? Yeah, that's her. Why? Oh, thank heaven she's alive. You won't be for long, and neither will you, chum, unless you tell us where you got those pictures. Naturally, I'll tell you. Why shouldn't I? If you hadn't been so discourteous when I asked you a few simple questions when we Skip first came... Skip that. Where'd you get them? They were found on Manuel Abello's body, of course. Being the attorney for Mr. Abello's estate, I naturally tried to locate his wife in order to make arrangements for the inheritance. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What inheritance? Why, Manuel Abello's fortune, naturally. He has no other relatives except his wife. You mean to say the guy had dough? Mr. Felix, or whatever your name is, I've already explained that Manuel Abello left a fair-sized fortune. Now, you... Annie, did you hear that? Why, you dumb cluck. I made a sucker out of you. I told you you Shut shouldn't up. have... Listen, you, how do I know you're telling the truth? I'm not the least bit interested in whether you believe I'm telling the truth or not. It's merely my assignment to find Mrs. Abello I'm and Mrs. give her... Abello? But you said that you Never were... mind what I said. I'm Mrs. Abello and I can prove it. You can? Sure I can. Here, take a look at this. Oh. Marriage certificate made out to Anne Everard and Manuel Abello. Seems to be an order. Mrs. Abello, I don't quite understand. Never mind what you don't understand. I'm Mrs. Abello, and I want that dough. Well, this is most irregular. You've already denied being Mrs. Abello. I had my reasons for denying it. Well, would you mind telling me what they are? No, now that I know he's dead. Manuel was in this country on a limited visa. If the police found out about it, he'd be deported. Think I was going to squeal on him? Uh-huh. That sounds reasonable. Yes. Yes, I can understand that. Very well, Mrs. Abello. Oh, by the way, uh, who is this gentleman? Him? He... He's my brother. Oh, I see. Well, if you'll appear at Manuel Abello's house tomorrow evening, the address is uh, 553 North Rendo, 
and uh, bring the proper credentials, I'll arrange to have the inheritance delivered into your hands. Dan, you were wonderful. Thank you, Miss Fairfax. I hesitate to take full credit, however, for anything I've done. Why not? You sold them the idea you were a lawyer. They believed every word of it. Well, people who are greedy for money, Miss Fairfax, are willing to believe most anything if they think they're going to get some. Yeah, here's the newspaper office. Newspaper office? What do we want in here? Are you going to look at those notices about yourself again? No, Miss Fairfax. I want to read the obituary columns for the last three days. And then we're going to call upon the local undertaker. Can you read that street sign, Miss Fairfax? Yes, it says North Verendo. It's a wonder I can read it, though, the way they put up street signs in this town. Never mind the street signs. Look for the number 553. How am I going to see it? It's so dark. The number on that house was 555, so the next house must be a bell place. Well, what are you driving by it for? I don't think it would be wise to park directly in front of the house, do you? Why not? Isn't anyone supposed to know we're here? No one but Mrs. Abello and uh, her brother. And I doubt that they'll disturb us. We'll disturb Then, what's it all about, anyway? Gosh, Mr. Fairfax, you'll rouse the neighbors. Come, let's cut across here. Why are we going around to the back of the house? Because in most residences, back door keys are more easily duplicated than front door keys. You mean you have a key? I have a pocket full of keys, Miss Fairfax. Careful, you might trip their steps. Don't worry about me. I won't step. Oh. I warned oh. you, Miss Fairfax. Please try and be more careful. I couldn't help it. Well, let me see now. Yes, yes, it's a common, ordinary backdoor lock. I'll try this key. Well, there we are. Dan, do you realize this is breaking and entering? Is it, Miss Fairfax? Come along. the dining room. If we get caught, we'll go to jail. Will we? Yes, I think of the living room. Yes, yes, those windows open on the front of the house. We might even get sent up for life. Indeed? Come over here, Miss Fairfax. Yes, here's the light switch. Can you feel it, Miss Fairfax? Yes, but if I turn on the light... Stand here, Miss Fairfax, with your hand on the light switch. When our visitor arrives, I'll tell you when you can switch on the lights. Our visitor... Hush, Miss Fairfax. Manuel Abello. In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... And now for the conclusion of... Danger, Dr. Danfield. And I'm therefore happy to report that our trip to the West Coast was somewhat profitable. Circumstances and opportunity gave Manuel his chance to... Oh, was something wrong, Miss Fairfax? No, but before you go on with this treatise, I'd like to ask a few questions, just to satisfy my own curiosity. Well, go right ahead, Miss Fairfax. Okay. Was Manuel a crook? Manuel, Miss Fairfax, was actually in this country illegally. He was also wealthy, as Anne Everard at first supposed. Then why did he tell her he wasn't? Because if he convinced Anne that he was poor, she'd naturally lose interest in him and forget about the pictures. Then why the fake accident? Oh, it wasn't a fake. Unfortunately, Manuel was really in love with Anne. He intended to kill them both when he wrecked the car. But he didn't succeed. No, no. Miraculously, both of them escaped death. When Anne returned to consciousness, she thought Manuel was dead. This, she decided, was a stroke of luck. Why? Because now she could marry Felix or anyone else without bothering to get rid of Manuel. But Manuel wasn't dead. Oh, no. 
When he returned to consciousness, he thought of a much better idea for revenge. He returned to town and studied the newspapers until he found one item about the body of an unidentified man being found several days before on the beach. He bribed the local undertaker to let him steal the body, placed it near the wrecked auto, then sent me the pictures and later phoned me. I don't see why you're the one he should call. <laughs> really, Miss Fairfax, you're not very flattering. Manuel knew that I'd investigate and probably reason that he, Manuel, had been murdered. He knew I'd accuse Anne, and Anne would have rather a difficult job denying knowledge of the accident since she didn't report it. Any more questions, Miss Fairfax? Yes. How did you know that Anne and her brother wouldn't keep their appointment with us at Manuel's house? Because I called the police and had them arrested. Oh. Now, how did you figure all this out? Very simply, Miss Fairfax. The body that we found beside the wrecked car was badly mangled, yet the clothes he wore were hardly soiled. Obviously, he was a phony. Also, who could have called me about the pictures if not Manuel himself? The rest was merely a matter of finding Anne Everard and then checking the local newspapers. How did you know Manuel would return to his home? I didn't. If his plan had worked, Manuel would have dropped out of sight, which was what he wanted. I guess that he'd return to his home to collect a few personal things before he disappeared forever. Okay. Go on with the dictation. Miss Fairfax. Well? Just a moment, please. Dan, I, I thought you were... Dan. I dislike having you so bored, Miss Fairfax. Shall we uh, postpone the dictation for a moment? Oh, Dan, I... Oh, Danny. Well, why didn't I think of that before? Oh.